Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Star Trek Hanasto, a Klingon campaign of Star Trek Adventures using the rules by Motifius Entertainment. My name is ELH the Game Master, and joining me are four lovely individuals who will meet right away because I'd like to get back into the swing of things after being on break for a few weeks. So we'll start with Mr. Steadfast Pig. Hello, I am Steadfast Pig, uh, Richard, and I am playing a croc of uh, House uh, House Koloth. Um, I am the 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 older older kind of a uh, fleet kind of command dude. Um, just hanging uh, hanging out. We're we're finally in Seg One. We got we got some stuff to do and things to see. So we're we're excited. Love it, love it. Kern, you're up next. Kern, all right. I am playing. Aegon, son of Ken, of the house Stora, and I'm the chief engineer of the fleet, and I look forward to doing some engineering stuff. All right, Donut. Hello, I'm Donut. I'm playing Captain Hanas, the uh, chief surgeon on board. Uh, maybe we'll be needing to patch people up today. Who could say? All right. And last but not least, Mon Jadin. What's up, everybody? Mon Jadin playing Colonel Mori, son of Paul Rich of House Mokgil, fleet advocate and otherwise shady character, out to bring the acapella lawyers and nice. reams upon reams of honorable paperwork, I mean records of battle, into oh, our new that. galaxy. Beautiful. So that that's that's how you're going to conquer this new species, is just paperwork, is, is what I'm hearing. Bureaucracy, baby. <laughs> it's out of that or a musical. Yeah. Oh, either that or musical. Okay, we're going to go to the intro before anybody starts singing. And welcome back. So, as is tradition among all my Star Trek Adventures games, as I have the players do an opening log, and I believe Captain Kanas has that honor tonight. So, Donut, please take it away. Oh, it is Medical Officer's Log. It is the 23rd day in Seg 1. Our first encounters with life forms here brought us face to face with a giant lizard beast we named Guacha. I apologize if I forgot the pronunciation. We were victorious, but not without cost. But now we are moving on to the next star system in Seg 1. Purportedly, we'll be running into a pre-warp civilization calling themselves the Drin. Perhaps we will find some honorable combat here and uh, slightly less dinosaurs. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So where we're going to start today's session is all of you, plus the good Admiral Zark, are in the war room, which is just a fancy version of saying that you're in the conference room right off the main bridge. And of course, in Klingon fashion, we have a grand hollow table in the middle, mood lighting of red and greens and browns. And in the middle of this hollow table is a picture of both the Drin's homeworld and the Drin themselves. Now, the Drin homeworld looks to be your standard sort of class M planet, blues, greens, browns, sort of Earth-like in its appearance. Um, but the Drin themselves are a little bit unique. And uh, I know I've showed the picture to the uh, players here, but I'm going to do my best to describe it for those of you listening and watching. So if you'd like to imagine a, a humanoid, two arms, two legs, uh, and then for a head, um, there is sort of these three medusin like tendrils or tentacles that kind of come off the back of the head 
And they're about as thick as an arm on one of these creatures. So they're big old thick tendrils. And at the end of each of these tendrils is what appears to be some form of an eye um, that is colored, you know, jet red with kind of a white iris, if that makes any sense. Hmm. And the picture or the hologram in the war room shows one of these Drin in uh, combat armor where they are wearing almost what looks to be like some sort of molded full plate that's very close to their body. And it also covers the tendril stalks is what I'm going to call them. Um, also of note, the creature does appear to have an auxiliary arm that's maybe part of the armor. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell whether it's part of the armor or if it's an actual, like, grafted limb. You're not sure. Um, but they are wielding daggers, axes, other weapons. And uh, to sort of rope us into the scene, uh, the Admiral sort of points at the hologram of the Drain and goes, Well, in my experience, I've never seen such a beautiful species. I uh, already can tell they will be great warriors to add to the Klingon Empire. Um, y- yes, Admiral. What we what we know about their, um, their planetoid? Um, have we done full um, science scans as of yet? Or? Well, based on our initial scans, we're looking at a standard Class M uh, variety. They have an interesting day-night cycle where apparently they spend about 10 hours standard time uh, in daylight and then 14 hours in nighttime so that they are actually more of a nocturnal species. How far pre-warp are they? Have they discovered nuclear weapons yet? Are they at the point of lead slug throwers or do they still hurl rocks catapult? And uh, Zark kind of shuffles between his pads. Uh, According to the chief science uh, report that I received, uh, apparently they do have reactors of the fusion variety. Sorry, no, fission. I always get those two confused. Uh, Mm -hmm. They have nuclear fission, and they appear to be close to energy weapon breakthrough, but for the time being, they do use projectile weapons. Fascinating. Have we known if this comes from conflict, or have they unified together to pursue this? It would be interesting if they have yet to wield the atom against each other, or if they have come into uh, into this as a planet without the conflicts that we've seen on many worlds. So, and it's been a while, forgive me, I'm trying to remember, who among you has the highest science at this point? Hmm. Not I me! Have, I have three. Might be me. Let me check. I got four. Uh, oh, well, that four No, beats it's me. not. If four beats me. All right. Well, well, science and medicine aren't the same thing. So what you're going to be rolling is an insight and a science. Uh, the ship will assist you with a sensor science. And I'm going to set the difficulty at a one here. Nice. And putting that as two dice. Or, no, wait. The ship is distinct. So just you right. Uh, so you're rolling two and the ship rolls one. Uh, okay, well, we already have two successes, and if someone could get sensor science on the ship. Sensor science. I can do that. Oh, somebody did it already. Did they? It hasn't come through yet for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I haven't just, seen I, it. Oh, I just heard uh, the dice rolling, so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> sensor, sensor science. That might, been, that might have been me. Hang on. I think I'm right there. Science one. There we go. Thank All you. right, so you actually... Hold on. Uh, that would actually that be, be focus, two yeah. successes, yeah, because it always has a focus. Yeah. Nice. So that is focus, a grand yeah. total of four successes, bringing you up to three momentum. Now, that, what you're going to learn trip. is that there is signs of atomic weapon detonation um, on one of the sort of southern, southeastern continents, but it's limited to just that continent. You're not seeing widespread use. Um, So it's very similar in kind of what happened in real world, where Mm -hmm. if you were to scan our planet Earth, you would see a lot of detonations uh, in the uh, Nevada desert and a few oceanic spots. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's it's not widespread. So they haven't, as you put it, used fission against one another. Do we have a rough idea of when the last detonation took place? Like, are we coming in right after nuclear test? Are they hundreds of years old? So if you spend momentum, I'll answer that question. 
Yeah. Should yeah, I, I think that that's useful. Coming. Okay. So the answer right. is the last detonation was 50 Klingon years ago. So roughly oh, okay. about 50, 60 some odd years ago. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Well, we can safely conclude that they are not engaged in large-scale conflict. They are familiar enough with energy principles. It will be interesting to see how close they come to reflecting disruptor beam in the field. Mm. Curious in identifying their combat patterns and whatnot. Um, Admiral, I'm not sure how you wish to handle this, but I I doubt that a civilization of this uh, magnitude would be in any way a major threat to... Uh, our fleets or uh, away teams, if it comes to it. Um, but do uh, you wish for us to uh, attempt to set up a, a channel and we have having system to speak with their leadership? And at this, Zark actually sets down his big stack of pads and kind of looks across everyone at the table and goes, Well, the High Council, when they told me that I needed to go to Seg 1 and expand the Klingon Empire, they didn't necessarily tell me how I was supposed to go about that. And... As much as this might sound like a Federation thing to do, I do believe that there should be consensus among all of us as we are the leaders of the fleet. If we are to conquer this species, so be it. If we are to set up trade agreements, so be it. If we are to barge in to one of their gladiatorial matches and win combat through glory, or glory through combat, so be it. But I want there to be consensus. Because this is our first time with first contact in this new galaxy, and we need to set a standard moving forward. Kayla spoke of wisdom in testing one's enemy. Perhaps we should engage in drawing out their capabilities and allow them to show their attitude. We can then respond with force or effort of our choosing at our time. I agree. They may be honorable. Just I concur because, as well. Yes. I, I would be willing to test their honor in combat and see what they could do. Perhaps they could be a valuable ally here, as mm -hmm. this is new territory for us. And your thoughts, Akrok? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, does that mean, are we planning on meeting with them to set up like a, a formal combat scenario? Or are we talking just chuck in some troops and see how they respond? Perhaps we should begin by understanding their scientific and diplomatic capabilities. Let us put forth a situation and see how they respond. Perhaps unintentional first contact with a stranded, wounded alien. How would they bring that forth? Would they attempt to destroy them? Would they friend it? Be indifferent? I'm also curious if they would be able to de detect our ships if we... And to orbit, I think it would be prudent to learn much about their um, technology, diplomatic capabilities, and potential yeah, military right. response if we set the fleet in orbit and see what their response is. Right. Just because they're pre-warped, do they have any spacefaring capabilities like satellites? Do we know, Can we detect that? Uh, it is safe for assume. someone to say something bad. Aha, yeah. I just were thinking about that. Yeah, because oh. uh, Earth right now is pre-warp, and we've got satellites and yeah. spaceships. Well, I mean, we if they've got fusion technology, they've got it. Actually, no, that's not a not given. Not necessarily. Yeah. Mm, we not don't know. So yeah. they they may be able to detect us more so than we know about. We may not be coming in un, unannounced. So uh, what I'm going to do, because I, I wanted there to be a reason why I was rolling some dice, I'm just going to mm -hmm. roll a few uh -huh. dice here. And nice. depending on the result, uh, that might affect things. Let me expand How out that 31. An 18 and a 13. Interesting. Um, so what I'm going to say is that your scanners or your sensors would detect that there are some satellites in orbit. Uh, some of them being used for communication. Others for looking out into the void. But since you are monitoring their airwaves and the transmissions they're putting out, nobody has gone on a big, oh my god, there's an alien ship approaching us yet. <laughs> oh, how's their music? <laughs> so, like, what, what's trend top forty right now? Yeah, show us the Spotify playlist. What's the rap? <laughs> so, I'd like you to imagine like hardcore, like like industrial trance or industrial music, and yeah. mix it with some form of like pop music. So you've kind of 
Actually, I know the exact band to reference this. Do does anybody know the uh, Electric Callboy? Anybody familiar yes. with that band? Yes, I do. My, no. my God, we we've discovered Berlin. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you've not listened, do they to have Electric the headbands? Callboy, Please tell me they're wearing the headbands. Of course, they have to wear the headbands. Yes. Um, but if you've not listened to Electric Callboy, uh, Callboy, look up their song uh, "Pump It" or look up their song "Hyper Hyper," and you'll get okay. a, you'll get a taste of what I'm talking about. Nice. All right. I'm worried, but I'm putting. I'm the seeing the, the thumbnail thing. right now, and I think that says lot. I, all right. They, either they, way, they have a song called Spaceman too. That's pretty fitting. Yeah. Very right. accurate. They, they they like a good angry big pumping beat. This is good. This is Marshall. This could mm-hmm. be honorable. What if we beam it back at them? Let, let's go. Maybe we should go like in contact. <laughs> we'll we'll side band some, see what they figure out. <laughs> right. Make them listen to some Klingon opera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's good if we, we warp in there, chill, and see if they have a response to us being there. We can learn a lot about their capabilities and how they respond to uh, potential external threats, right? And then mm-hmm. from that, we can learn about a lot about how they are as a culture. You know what I mean? So I think uh, Admiral Zark kind of... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I, okay. I was finished. I said... So Zark kind of looks perhaps at... They'll, perhaps they'll want to talk, though. So. Right, yeah. So Zark kind of looks at each of you in turn and nods appreciatively and says, Very well, then I believe we have a path forward. Why don't you all take the Notka out, our little scientific bird of prey, as it were, and mm-hmm. enter orbit and see what happens. If they start throwing missiles and who knows what else at us we'll have an answer if they start Indeed. squawking about how there's an alien in orbit we'll have another answer if they try to contact us again another answer uh though there is the matter of who should be in command of this mission proper and he looks across each of you in turn because technically you all could pull rank on each other but there's been that sort of unspoken we won't pull rank among each other and i think he's going to look at maury for once and say, Colonel Mori, uh, since you are nominally a diplomat in what I understand of your teachings, why don't you technically have command of this mission? Admiral, it would be an honor. I look forward to seeing how we can make our impact in the galaxy, for better or for honorable. Mm. I like how you said or were didn't say or worse. I like that. Or attitude. worse, yeah. <laughs> everything, everything's up and up in here. Admiral. Come on, completely positive. All right. Uh, so, is there anything you all want to do before boarding the the Natka and heading in to the Drin system? Um, I'm gonna set up some form of. If, if, if it's not already in place, I want to like, get some kind of live sensor feed that that logs everything from the Natka back to the Hanasto. I mostly for archival purposes, but I want to make sure that there's a copy going elsewhere that I've only I've got access to. Okay. Easy enough to set up. I can cool. set that up. Any other um, points of order? <clears throat> I'd like to go to the Natka and um, double check their security protocols and check the personnel um, and make sure that they are prepped in case things become hostile. Mm-hmm. Uh, just make sure that they're they're on on alert in case things go weird, um, and that the ship is, you know, good to go in case uh, things get a little squirrely. Yeah. So I think this is okay, actually one of the this is one of the first mm-hmm. times we've seen the Natka come out. Yeah. Uh, and again, the Natka is your scientific uh, Borel class bird of prey. Um, the captain is currently ill with some form of a flu, so that's why it's easy for you all to slip into the command structure and just take it for the out for a little bit. Um, but of note, uh, and this is I'm saying this so there's a note of it, and I'll possibly remember, you do have advanced sensor suites aboard the yep. Natka, which is going to make scanning and picking things up much, much easier. You also have fast targeting systems, which means if a mm-hmm. missile is shot at you, you can lock onto it very, very easily. Cool. And shoot it out of the sky. Mm-hmm. But, we have uh, determined that standard M class planet means we can, you know, breathe everything, right? Like, I just want to double check. Yes. We're not going to have yeah. no surprises, no weird radiation uh, discharges of, like, oops, surprise, we're allergic to <laughs> metrolithium. We, we or... probably find it. 
Oh, you cut Actually, out. Wait, there. wait. Wait, is Kronos an M class planet or is it just very human? I'm because pretty sure it's, Kronos it's, is class M. Okay, then uh, never mind. The, then maybe it's nice and temperate. Yeah, I think I think Kronos is is a technically a class M world. Speaking of the fast targeting and other bits, how long, if we do opt to engage the cloaking device, will we have enough warning time to switch it on and slip off in case something does lock us up? More than enough, yes. One last thing Good. that I want to prep for. Hmm. We're bringing at least one targ with us on the and its keeper, just in case we need to have a feast or show or show them what we can do and what we bring with us. You never know. Nice. Okay, so a sacrificial targ. Okay. Still so alive. Will, Still alive. So Dagon will go on and do an inspection of the engineering, see how things are going, uh, to make sure the ship is ship shape, and then uh, into the bridge after. <laughs> Okay, Dagon, if you could give me a insight engineering difficulty of one. Insight engineering difficulty of one. And you would have a focus. Guess I'm here, using obviously. a focus. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, one success is all you need. So the Nutka has kind of not really been used, and nobody's really kept up on the maintenance. So it's not the uh -huh. most glorious of vessels. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. But for your purposes, it'll work. But you definitely have right. at least like four or five points of when we get back, we are fixing this. All right. So I've got uh, an engineer on the uh, on the ice already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other points of order? Um, I guess. Just prep, uh, it's probably like a, a very easy thing to do. Just prep like the Klingon historical archives in case we start chatting with these people and they have a lot of questions. Like, hey, this oh, is I who probably, we are. Yeah. I, probably, I probably got that right on my person. Yeah, about this, <laughs> yeah. the, the, uh, the FAQ on Klingonology. Got it. Right, we've got the Q&A. The wiki, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. The wiki. Wiki. <laughs> With a Q Beautiful. instead of a K, it's a yeah, a lot right. of a lot of apostrophes in there for some reason, for sure. Yeah, uh, it's canon now. We now have a cling on wiki. Beautiful. All right. So, uh, unless anybody has any other points of order, what's going to happen is you all get aboard the Nutka. The hangar bay of the Hanasto opens up and disgorges the bird of prey. And you begin flying towards the Drin homeworld while the Hanasto stays on the edge of the system, nominally out of sensor range of the Drin, and uh, very, very hard for someone to spot the Hanasto. <laughs> um, but tell me about your approach. Are you going to just beeline for the planet and just enter into a normal orbit? Are you going to do the Star Trek thing of going into a polar orbit so it's they can't really detect you? Tell me a little bit about your approach here. We're going in under cloak, and we're going to try to keep a passive sensor lock on any of the commsats that we can pick up signals from. So we're basically monitoring either major media, new channels, or whatever kind of commsat we can get. Maybe military, maybe it's government. Space, who knows. space version of a duck blind, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, and as we kind of like get into range where we can get a good clear lock on whatever that is being broadcast. We're going to start making some active sweeps. Now, we're going to stand our cloak as much as possible, but once we have, once we can kind of become a faint signal on whatever might be detecting us, if we have um, like ESM or any kind of like electronic gear or radar detectors, we want to be just a weird ghost signal that stands out from the background, but nothing too clear to them yet. Okay. So one thing you said there was you were scanning uh, not just the satellites, but also the planet itself, if I understood correctly. Um, are you just looking for a response to the sensor ghost, or are you looking for something more? We're waiting to see what happens with the sensor. Uh, if they have anything that could, like, let's say they get this weird ping on their radar, do they send more powerful radars up? Do they have high altitude, anything that can come take a peek at us? Are we going to be... Uh, photographed well tell but does it does weird thing in orbit start to hit the media we want to okay. see what their reaction is 
Okay, so <laughs> one point of clarification. You said you were going in Undercloak. Are you decloaking once you're at the planet? No. We are staying... Well, actually, can we modulate the cloaking device enough so that we give a little bit of a solid return? That would be a question for your engineer. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure can. Very well. Mod- modulate the cloak. Give them a slight radar return. Try to keep okay. us at 50% if at all possible. So Let's we're, we're testing what their detection capabilities are. <clears throat> at the same time, we're kind of gauging the response, yeah? Correct. We can do cool. that. But keep right. an eye out for any manned orbital vehicles. Perhaps we will find one of their primitive satellites, or one of their primitive or, uh, astronauts. S- sensor should determine that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should, yeah. All right, well, if for modifying the cloaking in... device uh, to try to get you all some momentum, uh, Dagon, if you uh, could give me either a control or a daring plus engineering, the Nutcaw will assist you with a, I guess this would probably be some form of a structure and security here. Uh, difficulty of one on this one. Structure and <clears throat> uh, Cool, nice. Difficulty of one, you say? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing I have a focus. You do. That's a nice. Well, there's already three successes. Let's see if the Notka gets you any more. Remember, the ship rolls one die and always has a focus. Yep. yep. Okay, brings you there up you to go. four successes, which means you get three momentum, bringing you up to five total. Sweet. So, uh, to sort of narratively describe what happens is, uh, Dagon, you modulate the cloaking field so that it does provide a slight sensor return on radar. You enter into orbit, uh, almost geostationary with one of their satellites, and what you would detect without any further momentum spend is that they don't actually have like a international space station or something that there's actual drin in orbit. It's all just satellites right now. Um, okay. But the satellite you lock onto and you're monitoring okay. intensely, uh, we're gonna leave to random chance. So I'm gonna roll a challenge die. If I roll a one or a two, you get uh, yeah. sort of a um, a government frequency, but not a military frequency. If I roll uh, an effect, you get a military frequency. If I ooh. don't roll anything and it's a blank face, you are going to get uh, a sort of public frequency. Twitter. Okay. Cool. All right. Looks like you get a public frequency public. on this particular right. satellite. And Mm -hmm. what I'm going to say about this satellite is that this is actually one of the biggest and most Uh impressive satellites. So it is handling a large amount of communication, both uh, Uh transmission and receiving uh, for the interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And if it matters, uh, let's say that this satellite is actually maybe about half the size of your bird of prey. So it's Ooh. not quite shuttle sized, but it for a, a species like this, this is a big installation in orbit. Interesting. That's a, he- that's a heavy orbital lift. There's a lot anybody. going on, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to roll once again that 2d20 to see how they are detecting you. Uh, let's expand out that 28 and see what happens. All right. So they've rolled a complication and an eight, which is enough to detect yeah. you, but there's a complication here. Let me think. Yeah. They so think here's we're what's an asteroid. <laughs> well, here, here's what's going to happen is you will begin start to see in the public discourse that uh, that apparently there's been governmental uh, officers and military figures have quickly met under, you know, certain war councils and like I'm trying to think how I would describe this better. Um well, for anyone, at least my understanding of British culture is that anytime something big happens, like everybody goes to ten downing because that's that's right. where that's where everybody goes the, to deal with the government and military. So the Privy Council, yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's a very similar situation here where you're noticing, or at least the public is noticing, that there is a large shift of military and governmental figures to a specific mm-hmm. location. Um, but the complication is going to be that there are no images of you yet. There are no specific confirmations that they've found something in orbit. It's just that you are only seeing this movement of high-ranking figures at the moment. Mm-hmm. All right, so what? A, there is news. It is public. Uh, people, it's not some question of, as press, something, uh, we know that something has happened. We don't necessarily know yet if it's in response to us or if we just came at the latest global economic crisis. 
is there a panic on on the planet? I mean, is, is, are there are they reporting uh, like a uh, mass hysteria here? Or well, let's or leave that to a roll. Ah, uh, and that's, that sounds good. This is going to be something where I know a lot of you have high command, so I'll let you decide amongst yourselves who's doing the roll. But this would be a insight okay. and a command. The Nutka will assist you with a communications and command. I am going to set the difficulty at a three here. Let's see. You do I not can... want me rolling this one. Well, I've got advisors, yeah. so we can do a re-roll <clears throat> if anybody else roll. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can do it uh, if you want to. I got um, commanding bloodline. We... Or when I attempt... Or... Yeah, we can actually ignore... If somebody else does this, and they have a command... Sorry, it's... Inside command? Yeah. Inside command is the role. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, if anybody can do an inside command bigger than 14, commanding bloodline and advisor will help that up. What you said? <clears throat> uh, I'm, at, I'm at 13, but say, I, I probably have I, I don't. I don't. Oh, I'm 13. I'm 13 as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I probably have applicable foci, like maybe composure, arbitration, potentially. Uh, uh, I would give you leadership. arbitration or leadership. Yeah. I could give you either. Yeah. So I 13 with a focus. So I've got 13 as well. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we have a croc right. do this one? Because we we yeah. always got to get steadfast rolling a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. Cool. Yep. That's fine. We'll yeah. do it. All right. Um, All right. I'll, and I'll assist. Cool. And, and then let's I'll find out the tone of their community. Yeah, you said diff three, right? Diff three. Yep. And you're going to have an assist from uh, Mori, and you also have an assist uh, communications command from the Nutka. Copy. Um, I'm going to. Just to be safe, I'll give you a, a one threat, two momentum. I'll go up to four die. Okay. I will always take threat. We're, we're probably going to get some of these momentums back, but just want to make sure. All right. Well, there's already the three you need. Nice. All right. So I got the one assist. Well, is this full? I can't use a focus, right? You, If you have a focus that applies, you can on assists. Composure, psychology. Psychology would definitely be apl- applicable here. Do it, fam. All right, here's my list. Okay, yeah. so no help for Mori, but you still technically a croc. You could re-roll that 19 or the 15 if you wanted to uh, try to get more successes. No, Does do I still have an assist from the ship? Uh, yeah, if somebody could get the communications and command for the ship real quick. Oh, wait, it... It always it does have the focus, right? Yeah, One ship focus. always has a focus. All right, so no help from the ship, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, I guess I could we will from his uh, commanding bloodline. Oh, he did also more. You did insight science, just so you know. I don't think it would have uh, changed. It wouldn't have mattered, yeah, because yeah. I was still an eighteen on the die. Dang. But it would it would still proc the commanding bloodline, right? Because Yeah, yeah. yeah so like, uh you're cool. getting a re-roll from That's... advisor and commanding bloodline will let you ignore a complication if you roll it. Copy. Okay, cool. So right. we will one one die focus. Yep. All right, you get another focus, which means you there are now at four momentum by my count. Yep. Yes. All right. So it's very interesting with everybody working together, uh, you are able to easily figure out what the temperament of the planet is. And it's one of those things where it's kind of a mixed bag where some of the planet is like trying to speculate and figure out why are so many people moving about? Uh, You know, is this something big has happened? It's kind of one of those like watershed moment i think is what is the the real term Mm -hmm. for it where people are trying to figure out Mm -hmm. is this something big is something big about to happen and Mm -hmm. their stock market is going crazy right now because everybody's speculating um but what's Uh, very uh, important uh, is that there is not mass hysteria there is not mass panic in fact the most panic that you're seeing is on like conspiracy websites of their you know like of their Uh, internet uh, where the conspirators oh, are like, oh, it's the end times. We've predicted the end times. If you look at this part of our culture, of this nice. musical, and of this book, it reads up to this number, oh, and that day is today, and it's a whole thing. Yeah. How so. influential are those conspiracists in any of the major governments? Uh, let are me put any, it this are... way. Uh, do you think 4chan is influenced at all uh, in today's <laughs> government? <laughs> right. uh, in, in other words, that's a loaded money. question. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of a loaded have... question. <laughs> <laughs> Scarily, yes. Yeah. Spookily, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, um, wow. All right. Okay, so we're on a planet full of beatards. Awesome. Uh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> uh, um, all right, so we can't Death Star. No. All right, uh, let's. I don't know. I, I'm in favor of establishing an honorable first step in this. If they are seeking a watershed, perhaps they should understand their place in the universe. Let us begin with a demonstration of our strength, and then let us approach them. Let us find. We should find something to show our power. Oh, just from our on top of their parliament building, basically. <laughs> no. Where is the? Can yeah. we? Where's that, the nearest the orbital strength. debris? Nearest orbital debris. Uh, yes. Well, there are defunct satellites. You could attempt to shoot out of the sky. We know they're defunct, or we're just guessing. Well, I would say that if you want to. P- 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 Wait. P- better idea. Better oh, idea. Wow. Uh oh. If they have commsats, they, somebody's got to have what looks like a photo reconnaissance satellite, right? Uh huh. Let's turn it around. Let's do it a 180 so it points up in orbit, and let's just blink in and out of cloak for a moment. Where it was pointing. Oh, yep. Okay, no, so we want. Gonna... We, yeah, we want to turn those cameras around. We want to keep this thing in orbit, but we're gonna spin it. We're gonna do whatever it is that satellites do to. I don't know. A 180 on it. A yep, and have its it. cameras point upwards at us. We're gonna, we are going to send them a selfie of oh, our oh, ship. Oh, oh, oh. Smile, smile for the camera. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's one way to do. It. Yep. Uh, well, click uh, on smile too. That's, that's right. beautiful. Right. Yeah, we're we're all looking really good. Not, <laughs> not intimidating at all. Off the top of my head, I think tractor beam is. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that's right. I did load it into Foundry. Good job, past me. Good job. Nice. Indeed. All right. So uh, I would imagine this is going to be a tractor beam roll, which means I'm going to need someone to roll me a control and security at a difficulty of two. And the Nutka will assist you with a structure security. Captain Dagon, perhaps this this would merit from an engineer's fine touch. Control security, okay. And you said structure security. Structure security for the ship. ship. Yep. Okay. So okay. So uh, you said difficulty of two. Of two. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And since I'm doing that, uh, I've got starbase propulsion systems. I, Star, it's Star, it's, Star, it's Star. comparable enough. I'll give it to you. Comparable? Okay. Am I, am I capable of assisting? If you tell me how. Um, I'd just like to do more on the, I guess, I guess the security side of things. Oh, I guess he's doing it with security, not engineering. Um, yeah, I was going to, I don't know if he's as familiar with it because it's technically a security role. So We can always tell I'm on the ship. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um <laughs> The ship yeah. rolled a one here, so it's like, yeah, wow. We're, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, three successes, which means you get a momentum back, bringing you up to five. And Ooh. what that's going to mean is that you are able to turn the satellite around and you decloak for just a moment to give him the selfie. Do you stay decloaked? We're going to recloak. We're just long enough for the satellite to pass under us, get a couple of seconds of exposure. I'm sure that we can calculate how long it would take we got better computers and then we're going to return to cloak and keep an eye on those communications let's see, see how, how long it react. takes for them to notice yes right. and and meanwhile another thing that we can do the kanas begin seeking out information from their communications about their most deadly diseases let us see if there is anything that we could do to show them the what they call the humans have a saying the carrot and the stick. We have shown them the stick. Let us prepare a carrot as well. Let's see if we can help them with some of their medical problems. Truly, really they have some. Interesting. Indeed. Um, let's let's deal with that first before I do a roll to see how they react to the photo. Yeah, uh, I want to do some rolling. Let me see. Kanas, why don't you give me a insight and a medicine? And the ship will assist you with a communications and a medicine. I'm going to set the difficulty at a two here. Get that thing on EMH on the line. All right, we've got already <laughs> one success, so I need to see a success from the ship. Again, communications and medicine. I got it. 
Okay, yeah, I was about to say it. I don't have it open, so. Uh, uh, all right. I didn't do it with the focus. Uh, oh, that's that was okay. two we'll dice. Just Sorry. Take the first roll. It's quite all right. We'll take the first roll of an eight, which is one more success, which is getting you your two. So I'm going to actually let Donut, I'm going to let you decide uh, what sort of virus or condition or something that the Drin have that Klingons would have a cure for. What, what would that maybe be? <laughs> I think disco fever. Disco fever. Disco fever. <laughs> Measles. Measles. So, I was thinking we could probably find something that would help out with like a lung capacity respiratory illness because how could you do honorable combat if you're stuck coughing? Mm. So we want to make sure if we are to test their physical strength, we want to make sure they're in top physical condition. We can't have them hacking up a lung. So you are in stuff there, pollen allergies. Yes. Hmm. All right. So yeah, uh, what I'm going to say then is, is it meningitis is the congestion or is that ammonia that I'm thinking of? I think you're thinking pneumonia. of ammonia. Well, it's pneumonia. Yeah, yeah. pneumonia, yeah. Um, so you are basically able to do uh, figure out from their medical records that you're able to access that they do have an ammonia uh, condition that sometimes afflicts their greatest warriors. And yeah, your Klingon medicine is advanced enough. Weird thing to say. Um, <laughs> that, uh, yeah, really. Uh, you, <laughs> You do actually have a very easy and replicatable cure for this condition. All right, good to good to have in our back pocket. Excellent, sure. Stand by to transmit a sideband of that cure across their most across that communication satellite. Do not transmit yet. Let's see their reaction first. All right, so. Interestingly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend three threat to expand the complication yes. range for their role uh, to be a 17 to 20 here. And the reason I'm doing oh, that boy. is because uh, if they roll a 17 or through 20, you know, shit that's hits the fan. But that's actually sure. a very, wow. very good Super roll low. for them. Yep. Let me check. Yeah, that's a three and a 12, which is actually two successes, no complications. Well done, Dren. All right. Um, so what's going to happen is, again, since you are tied into their main satellite, it's at this point that, just like on Earth, if someone were to find something of this scale and of this importance, um, there would only be so much the government could do and the military could do from it breaking on the internet. So very right. quickly, within maybe not even 15 or 30 minutes of you doing the satellite turnaround trick... Um, the internet is flooded with pictures uh, that have been stolen from the feed, and everybody on the planet wow. is glued in, speculating, uh, talking about, oh, are we being visited by aliens? Is this a hoax? You know, this is very much a hotbed of topic. No mass hysteria, no riots in the streets, no Independence Day, top of skyscraper civilization, you know, party <laughs> things, but you definitely have the planet's attention at this point. Can the, we the tell... Fa wait, can the we fact that they were able to leak out stuff from their, certain, like, spy satellites, I got questions for their NSA. Well, Good, good, good hackers. <laughs> Alright, my yeah. question is, can we determine if we're the first first contact they've had oh yeah are they going like not again Lord? yeah are they is this something that has happened before has it happened long ago or are we truly the first uh interplanetary friend or foe they've met i'm gonna leave it up to chance i'm gonna roll a i'm gonna roll a challenge die if yeah. i roll an effect uh okay. you are not the first one okay. anything else you are the first one Okay, we I did not roll an effect, yes. so you are cool. the very yes. first first contact. We have control of the situation. Indeed, we can we control the narrative. Right, exactly. We yeah, control exactly. the narrative, and that may make them more willing to uh, align with us, and you uh -huh. know help. You know, we do a we do a massive like, genophage and make the pneumonia airborne. <laughs> like, <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opposite. Oh, wow. We're we are <laughs> right. not. Yo, germ warfare. Super not honorable. I, I will ignore the uh, the suggestion of chemical and biological warfare to overcome an inferior opponent. No. Uh, that was Richard talking. Who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, Mass Captain. Effect? That's not that's not in the Star Trek universe. What are we going? Yeah. Captain Khanos, this is my least favorite disease on this the This is my least favorite disease on the Citadel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what's going to happen next is I'm actually going to spend 
fourth threat to create two complications. Ooh. Ooh. The first complication oh. is that just like when we have like ham radio here on Earth, anybody with any transmitting capability is now blasting a signal trying to get in contact with you. So it's not just the government, it's not just the military, it's enthusiasts, it's radio stations, everybody is pinging the location where they saw you last with a signal. The second complication is going to be that you are noticing that one of the launch facilities for one of their uh, heavy launch vessels is getting into position to launch into orbit. Now, you're not 100% sure that it's being launched directly at you, but you do see the movement of this launch vessel all the same. Wait, how Wait, how long have we been visible to You hours? have been Eight? here for maybe an hour. Okay, so in one hour, they were able to get a space lift vehicle ready to go. Yes. This Actually, is interesting. Less, less than an hour, because it's just since the picture was taken. Yeah, it's been 30 minutes since the picture's been taken. So there you go. they have rapidly responded to this. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Have their attention. Would you... I, I admire, admiring their audacity. <laughs> The audacity of these amateurs to attempt contact with an alien let's, vessel. Let's let's scan that. Uh, pretty bold, that though. I do. There. I can respect the bold. Mm, I like bold. What can we identify if this vessel is armed or is attempting to be armed? What's the disposition of this ve vehicle they are attempting to launch? Well, whoever would like to roll, this will be a reason of security, and the ship will assist you with a sensor security difficulty of three based on the size. Okay, I've got the ship. Interesting. Probably don't want me doing that unless psychology has a focus. No, okay. this is definitely like a starship construction or a tactical system. Um, yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, starship uh, security systems, potentially. Most definitely. Seeing what's starship's been done. Copy. Starship's mm -hmm. been done. All right, so we already have an assist from the ship, so I just need to see two more successes from a reason and security. Copy. I think we want to throw a momentum at this. Yeah, I'm going to check momentum for your three die. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Ooh. you get four Ooh. successes, meaning you get that momentum right back, keeping you at five. Sweet. Um, yeah. So what oh. that's going to mean then is I'm trying to remember. There was like a Disney ride that I remember doing when I was a kid, but I don't remember the name of it. And it's probably no longer oh, there. So I'm just going to have to pick <laughs> another reference. Um, oh, I know. Who's watched Outlaw Star? Everybody's seen Outlaw Star, right? Yeah. Uh, no. I, I know. I've, I know I've watched of it. parts. I, okay, I gotta figure I know out enough from Osmosis. Gotta figure There's out. There's an reference. Outlaw. Um, Sorry. So basically, the it's very similar to Zephram Cochran's uh, Phoenix, mm. where it's okay. basically uh -huh. a missile with a auxiliary vessel on top of it. Um, oh, okay. So it's one of those okay. things where if you'd like to imagine. It's basically a giant booster, and on top of that yeah. is like a spy plane or some form of reconnaissance high altitude vessel that they mm -hmm. can send up and just sort of spy or look at things. Right, but they're not right. sending up some retrofitted nuclear warhead just to go get rid of this thing. Correct. Okay. We talking cool. about like Mission Space from Disney World? Yeah, that was what. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For a second, oh, I was thinking play the navigator. I did that. <laughs> I was trying to think. Yeah. I was like, I was like, it's probably it's got to be an older version. But uh, yeah, I think missions is it still there? I have no idea. I have no I, idea if it's still there. But I, man, that was a I core think, memory when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> right, unlocked for yeah, sure. I, I did that forty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oof, ow, my bones. Mm -hmm. They are all right. Oh, they're hurting all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's maneuver. Let's uh, maneuver in a way that, if at all possible, now you know what there, there's. Let's not try to hide anymore. Let's just sit right by where we were and let them come up. I agree. I they they went through all the trouble to launch themselves at us. The least we can do is accept them. Receive them. We, we will you, receive them receive on them. our turf. Are you leaving uh, communications channels open? We we're going to keep listening. I don't see why not. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. I think we should let them let them call us for sure, yeah. All right, important qualification. Are you decloaking as well? Are you staying half cloaked? We are staying as full cloaked as we can. Full how are they going to find us? Oh. Well, yeah, we're, we're going exactly. Yeah. We want to see how they're going to try to. Serve. 
for us? Are they going to start spamming with radar? Uh, Are they going to just start blazing out, hey, we saw you, what's up? Um, Do they have Uh, LIDAR, some other weird shit? Um, Do they detect any weird radiation that they've got? We don't know how they look. We're we're hoovering up information about them, but we'll get ready to declare. And let's also get ready to raise shields if weird things happen. Noted. All right. Well, as you wait then and wait and watch and listen, uh, the launch vehicle lifts off from the platform, makes that beautiful orbital entry, and uh, it does come up within about 400 meters of your position. So it gets up pretty close. And you're detecting that this spy vessel that kind of looks like a... um, I'm trying to remember the this type of plane that we have in real life. Is it the is it the Blackbird I'm 71. thinking of? The Blackbird, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it kind of looks like a Blackbird where it's kind of a long cylinder with two other cylinders tied to the back yeah. and little fins yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but what happens is part of the back part, uh, I think it's the dorsal is what it's called. Part of the mm-hmm. dorsal section of the hull of this vessel uh, opens up and a literal laser, no threat to you, but a literal laser begins to scan the area. Um, but what this like means, a LIDAR. Yeah, kind of like a LIDAR. Um, but what this means is I'm actually going to spend the remaining two threat that I have to create the uh, complication that your scattering field on your cloaking device actually uh, is not effective against this particular type of laser. So when the laser does go to your position, it scatters and sort of reveals you and the laser stays locked on to your vessel. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. And at the same time, uh, you are getting a transmission from the pilot of this vessel. Captain cool. Dagon, make a note of whoever was maintaining the cloaking device that a very basic form of light emission was able to penetrate it. I want. I already noted. Contact. I already noted, sir. <laughs> Have the responsible party discommended and thrown out the airlock upon our return. So actually, real quick, real quick, for Dagon, there was nothing yeah. wrong with the cloak. This yeah, is just saying, a laser that, line, that yeah. this is just a yeah. new form of laser that your cloak was not ready for. Yep, yeah, uh, that's, uh, for me, I'm just taking notes. <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. For future modifications. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm going to start working on it right now. <laughs> there you go. Lock every, get every, all the data we can on this laser as we're getting yeah. scattered, but let's decloak. And there you go. Let, Say hello. Let, and let's start blinking. I don't know. Can we like? Do we have running lights that we can blink in like some kind of some sort of binary code? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's start blinking prime numbers at them. Oh yes, the you know, stereotypical actually, I, I, greeting. I, yeah. Why not use the transporter and transport him out of his ship and beam him onto the ship? Well, that's that. That I think so. That's going from zero to sixty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big if, time. <laughs> yep. So if we demonstrate that we're sentient and they send up more shit in a panic, or if they turn and run, actually. Yeah, we'll start blinking binary code. If they try to get out, let's track to beam them in place. And if they do try to escape, we're going to jam their communications. Okay. But only if they try to leave. All things have been noted. So you decloak (laughs) and you begin (laughs) flashing binary signal. And the transmission uh, changes. So before, it was actually something very similar where they were just sort of sending their version of prime numbers in their language. And they've been transmitting long enough that the universal translator that Klingons have, everybody has it. Um, yeah. Your universal that translator is Next able. Question, yeah. yeah, your universal translator is actually able to translate the transmission coming from this spy vessel, and mm-hmm. the ve- the message is the following: This is Commander Asti- uh, Astizia. Alien vessel, are you able to understand and reply to this message? Please respond, and they just have that on a loop. Hmm. Not much anymore. Commander Astizia, yeah. they said it was Astizia. I put it in uh, in Foundry as well. Yeah, I'm gonna try to remember that. Um, I'm writing it all down. Is there any kind of visual markings, uh, flags, iconography, insignia on the vessel? Yeah, so you would have known this uh, just being your normal modific- or normal monitoring. Uh, they do have what is essentially the 
uh, Germanic flag, so the the flag nice. of Germany, just for the Drin. Oh. Um, it is one of the largest and more advanced uh, countries uh, aboard the Drin, aboard on the Trim home world. Gotcha. But yeah, I should also say while you're debating about how to reply to this message, the uh, the amount of things on the internet right now uh, they have exploded literally there is live feeds there are streamers live reacting to you know the the ship in orbit because you've decloaked there's every news station has on extraterrestrial es- uh, you know experts and conspiracy theorists and <laughs> military <laughs> figures like you are the entire world to the drin right now cool Ugh. Sweet. <laughs> oh, what every Klingon wants uh, to be is the center Lori of the says his audio is messed up. He's he's uh rebooting his headphones. Oh god. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you guys are definitely taking a much more tempered approach than I. I was kind of worried you were just going to show up and start blowing up buildings for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> well, we show the evolution of the Klingon now, right? Empire. You know, I yeah, mean, we can. It's, hear you it's been forty years since the. Yeah, we've got War. better. All right, we, we've, we're gonna, we've had more we're gonna, better relations with the Federation, so you know some of it would have rubbed off a little. Yeah. We're gonna broadcast a message to the planet. We're gonna find whatever big broadband communications that we can side. Just nah, for, forget with the side bands. They see us. We're gonna drop any pretense, and we're just gonna start going out of the radio. Drin Planet, this is a vessel of the Klingon Empire, a star-faring is people from another galaxy rest assured that at the moment we mean you no harm and your responses indicate a civilized and wise populace know this we are exploring this galaxy and we intend no harm but we do intend to ensure that the people we meet receive the benefits and understanding of aligning with our empire and with our peoples as you begin to explore the galaxy we have okay. shown ourselves to you, and your, inquisi- and your inquisitive, inquisitive spirit does you well. We wish to extend a show of our good faith. We will begin transmitting a cure to a disease which plagues many of you. We hope that this will yield benefits, and we hope that, unsupplied and understood, we will have a chance to meet with your wisest and most honorable emissaries face-to-face. End communication. All right. That, yeah, we're not we're that, not doing dialogue. With that very very well done speech, we're gonna take a five to ten minute break. We'll be cool. back shortly, everybody. Uh, Stay oh boy! Oh boy! Send us some challenge. And welcome back to part two of session six, or is it session seven? Either way, welcome back to part two, where uh, the Klingon Empire has made first contact with the Drin, or at least the very beginning stages of first contact. And a couple things I wanted to highlight real quick, and at least as far as I jotted down, um, you said that you came in peace, that you transmitted the cure, all good things there. Uh, but you also did say that you are from another galaxy, which is one thing I, I am going to highlight here. Um, yes. The other thing that it said is you transmitted this on a broadband, not just to uh, Estesia's vessel. Um, so what's going to happen is I don't think a role is required for this. Um, you basically get the equivalent of everybody who has a transmitter on the planet because everybody heard it because you made it very clear to transmit it broadband. So anybody yeah. with a transmitter is trying to reply to you. So you have government <laughs> trying to reply to you. You have the military try to reply to you. You have enthusiasts trying to reply to you. You have basic radio stations, KO1FM, that is trying Gosh. to reply to you. Um, <laughs> yep, we're going to go on with uh, Lawnmower and Jerry in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but more importantly, uh, Estesia is also trying to reply to you like, hey, can can you talk Probably to me? Probably the most important one. Yeah, yeah Estesia is like, all right, cool. Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, thanks <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, no, so what she actually says is, uh, Klingon vessel, if I heard and understood you correctly, um, what you say is 
amazing. Um, perhaps we can talk in a more secure channel. And she's basically hinting, hey, talk to me, not to the entire planet. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think that's fair. That's a good idea, yeah. I, I disagree. Why are we addressing individual nation states when we are out to subjugate or ally with entire worlds? Well, we don't know if it's an individual nation state. We just don't know if we want to be necessarily talking to all of 4chan. <laughs> we don't know if it's all of 4chan. I, whatever this odd thing is of which you speak. If they cannot unify a response, they are not even fit to be Jekpui. Let us see how their unity comes. Even I'm gonna take I mean, a pat. I'm gonna take a pat and load load up the information on 4chan and and and, and have, pass it over to uh, Captain Moore either. I'd be like, are you sure? Well, that's Even that's a from... that's a brand new sentence I never thought would be on. Yeah, that was that was a wild, was a wild. <sighs> Very true. We cannot necessarily. We must understand that indeed, unity comes with struggle, and there is honor in struggle. Very well. Let us return to hailing. For What's your name again? I'm sorry. I can't, I can't write it down. Uh, Astiza. 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 Astiza, yeah. Well, Astiza. Astizia of Drin. This is the Klingon vessel Nocta. We speak to address your entire planet. Do you seek to address us individually as a person, or do you represent your planet? I have the high honor of representing not just my country and my military branch, but I have the honor of perhaps being the first envoy for my people. Then go to your people and make it clear, make it known to them that we seek to ensure that the Klingon Empire grows strong with planets. If there is a squabble between nation states, then it would no, not look very well upon an equal partner in an intergalactic relationship. I hope my understanding comes across clear. It does, yes. The one thing I would tell you is that while the governments will be unified in our response, our militaries will require a trial by combat, where we have ranked our own selves uh, based on our level of capability and preparedness among our military branches. Perhaps you have noticed that my branch of the military, the Space Force, as it is known, was Sick. able to get a response to you within the hour. Uh, that is why my branch is considered one of the best of the planet. What I mean by this and where I'm going is that there will be a requirement of trial by combat unless you wish to not impress upon... Or let me rephrase that. Unless you are unwilling to show your strength. Basically, what she's saying is you're going to have to fight to show that you're worth following. All right. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, can the Notka target the uh, a less w the launch site from, w from her ship? Is there like a parking lot or something? Yeah, there's a parking lot. Too many people. Oh, gosh. All right. Is, Why? Is, 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 what? Lot. Yo, trial by combat. combat. Yo, what's no, going no, on? No, no. I, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me explain what, I, what I'm trying to get to. What I want to do is see if our lasers can carve the empire of the Klingon, uh, carve the logo of the Klingon empire into their parking lot and impress them on her. If you want to engage in combat with us, it will likely be a def If you seek to prove your honor, then perhaps... Perhaps actually, you know what? Actually, do you really want? Yeah, let's let's call let's clarify what they mean by combat. If it is honorable <laughs> combat or to the death, personal combat. Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. clarify first before yeah, we go before in. We start literally shooting lasers at the government facility. <laughs> yeah. oh, I didn't say government yeah, facility. Really. I said a parking lot. I We're don't know. This is when they launched a spaceship. <laughs> let's not start shooting lasers. But that kind okay, of goes contrary to everything we've done so far. Let, let me rephrase. I'm not out to destroy the parking lot. I'm out to just, like graffiti. With a laser. Oh, that part. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. We're still tracking. <laughs> like, yeah, right. but no, no. We're let's let's have them clarify what they mean by combat yeah, yeah, trial yeah. first. All right. I'm pretty, so I'm we, pretty sure. What do you we tell us? Does it? personal combat? <laughs> we have a long tradition of honorable trials by combat, as well as all other demonstrated demonstrables of honor. Very well. Explain your traditions of trial by combat. Perhaps we can come to a honorable agreement with our blades, teeth, claws, arms, legs. What is your normal tradition? 
this display. Well, uh, I'm, I'm thinking as the game has to give me a moment. There it is. I found it in my notes. I'm sure by now that you have monitored our communications, are very aware of our gladiatorial arenas. Our branches of military routinely compete in what are known as military competitions uh, within these arenas to prove that the best warriors and the best equipment are worthy of service. If you are so willing to submit yourself to one of these trials by combat, I believe there would be no doubt in thinking, at least among the military branches, that you are worthy of being followed. Honor. Yeah, yeah. Now, I ask this. In your missions of trial by combat, we have and we have seen many where are our, several that we where the challenge party is able to choose methods of combat hold this tradition you cut out there a little bit for me yeah, a lot actually yeah that was a rough one man <laughs> <laughs> does the challenged party in your culture select the method of combat and I'm checking my notes Traditionally, we war with blades and other personal weapons. We could nominally allow for firearms of some kind, if that is your wish. But I would tell you on a personal level that from what I'm hearing and understanding, I would volunteer to perhaps duel your best warrior and perhaps show that if you are able to defeat me in honorable combat then there is no need for you to compete against the 18 other branches across the world. 18? Wow. Hmm. Yo! That's, <laughs> they got that's, that's subdivisions hell. upon subdivisions, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to Stay make in. it maybe clear out of character, so right now, Estesia yeah. is like one of the best military people on her planet. She's been selected as an envoy. What she's basically telling you, like, hey, you can either do you a tournament arc... Okay. Or you can duel her right away. Hmm. Well, I mean, uh, you know what I'm thinking? Let's beam her to the mess hall and see, you know, the best place for a fight is in the mess hall, so. Hmm. And televise it. I have a feeling they most likely have some sort of a location in mind. Well, it is their culture. But she came to us, and she's challenging us. Very, Captain Estesia, as the challenge party, we will accept your challenge, but on a condition of a, the expression I believe is a leveled playing. Let us duel as the way warriors would, as soldiers do in every culture at some point in time, without the use of firearms, without the use of high technology particle beams. Let us accept your challenge hand to hand, and we will see who prevail. With no weapons, no blades, let us fight as one and prove the honor of the victor. Right. So we're gonna go at this hand to hand. To hell with blades. I got judo. I don't know, I like blades too. We all so... do like we all like blades, but they probably got some weird shit. Well yeah, they yeah. It's probably we got like hair tentacles though, so does that count as hand to hand? Hair to hair. We are Klingons. I think it counts. Um, yeah, so they're, they're probably going to have their cultural melee weapons, right? So why can't we bring our Batlas? It's, I yeah. think Batlas, I think a show of our classic culture. Okay, fine, fine. All right. Re revi time warp, Q, snap, fingers. It's like, very <laughs> well, <laughs> Captain Estiza. It is always it. good to see a martiality in any culture, and we are pleased to accept your challenge. Let us engage as warriors do in every culture with the edges of our blades and let their songs be sung throughout this entire galaxy. So if you purport to be the strongest, we will send our strongest blade master. So give us the location of your arena of choice. All right, so they transmit a location of the largest gladiatorial arena. I'd like you to imagine literally Madison Square Garden, but a oh, like a Coliseum type nice. thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, Estiza also says, uh, do you require landing coordinates for your vessel as well? We can provide a space where you may land and not be harassed by the normal populace. 
the normal we, populace. I think that would be appreciated. We can just we can just float the ship and transport down to uh, Captain. Rails are capable of atmospheric capability, so we can actually let our first tra- let our response be the first one down wins that part of the challenge. Let us be, and <laughs> we're gonna close the transmission and. Uh, Whoever wants to beam down first, I guess. Uh, who's our best blade person? Uh-huh! Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm down for that. Go for it. The croc's already I'm ripping his shirt off and running down. Like, yeah, heck yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting here, croc. You you shall bear the honor of the Klingon Empire on your shoulders this day. <laughs> let your blades <laughs> sting, but let the chorus of the Empire be behind you as you go. We haven't determined by killing her? I'm, I'm assuming I'm not killing her. Is this lethal? You are winning this match. Beautiful. That is what is necessary. I'm we leave the discretion of the honor of, of life or the greater honor of victory in well, your hold, capable hand. Hold, I, I expect she'll expand on the rules there. <laughs> I would assume so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, I, I, um, I, I, will be, I will be your uh, weapons... Uh, Master. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So what's going to happen is uh, Estiza, after she transmits and you t- you cut the transmission off, her vessel does angle back towards the planet and begins re-entry process. Let, but you're beating be down, is my understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, think, yeah, I was thinking of bringing the ship down yeah. in, a, in a hover above the, glad- uh, the, the Coliseum there. That's and, fine. And just... We can beam down. We can be there waiting for yeah. her. But let's have the, let's have the crew hover the ship. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, if I understand correctly, the four of you are going to beam down. Yeah. And you will emerge in the uh, pit floor of the Coliseum yep. that has been transmitted to you. And you yep. actually do so uh, in the middle of an existing fight. And oh, what that's going to look like is on one side, you see Drin warriors and they're using things like spears and nets, very classic Roman sort of weaponry. Um, mm-hmm. On the other side, again, very Roman, are things like what seems to be some kind of a mix between a uh, a woolly mammoth and a tiger. So kind of a, a Siberian Ooh. tiger that's more muscular and has bigger tusks. Um, there's also some form of a bug creature <clears throat> that has an unnerving amount of legs and arms, similar to a centipede, um, uh. but definitely bigger than you would be comfortable with, is how I would put it. Um, but as you beam in, uh, I am going to say that we are going to move into a little bit of structured combat cool. because uh, they don't know who you are. They, mm-hmm. You literally just appeared out of nowhere and mm-hmm. this could be a uh, very interesting fight because the Drin might stop if you tell them, hey, we're the Klingons from orbit, hi, but the creatures aren't. Right. <laughs> so, uh, we, since we are in we structured combat... we use our combat, disruptors on the, on the creatures. <laughs> yeah. So, since we are in structured combat, the players do get to go first, so who among you would like to act first? Yeah. Thank you. Probably Mori to hey. inform them that hey, we're the people that are uh, here to fight your champion or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let well, I guess you know we're gonna go out. Uh, what is it? We come down in the middle of this. Uh, I don't know. I'm happy to, to let them find and uh, notice us. We, I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna hold action for the moment and see how they react. Get ready to defend. Okay, so that's not going to take up the player's turn, so we'll again open floor. Would anybody else like to act? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> so he says he says that to the, uh, the Drin, but the, the, the animals aren't going to understand that. So yeah. <laughs> let's look at the animals. and maybe, maybe if they sense big, bad Klingon pheromones and do something, let, let's... Uh... If the animals want to get frisky, we're going to make examples of them first. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to hold our, we're gonna hold our action. I think let, yeah, let them fight it out. Them. See if yeah. somebody starts coming towards us, and we'll deal with whoever steps towards us. I think okay. we sense. we await their champion. If they if this is their champion, then let them come. All right, it's not. All right, I'm going to do fine. this uh, diplomatically once more. I'm just going to roll a challenge die for each of the two creatures. Interesting, they both rolled blanks. 
So what that's going to mean is as you've beamed down, the Dren are kind of looking at you in their armor, their eyes sort of narrow, and they're very much, you know, not sure who to aim the weapons at. But the creatures, the large centipede creature and the large Siberian tiger mutation, um, they're going to see and smell new prey and are immediately going to launch at the both at the entire away team. Um, so as I usually do, I'm just going to roll a d4 to see who's our lucky winner. Uh, it seems that uh, Kern, Dagon, is our lucky winner today. So, yeah. Mr. Dagon, I am going to need a daring and a security at a difficulty opposed. Let me go ahead and roll for the bug creature. Oh, dear. That is an 18. Let's expand that out. Okay, they only got two successes. So if you want to counterattack this creature or not be hit by this creature, I need to see three successes I need three. here. Mm -hmm. so I, will, I will take one momentum for an extra dice. Okay. Daring security. Uh... Let's go with three. Ah. That is only one. Do you wish to use your determination to reroll any dice here? Uh, yes. I think it's, it'd be a worthy uh, <laughs> opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. So let's roll two. Also, which value are you applying in this instance, by the way? Oh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> the value of I don't like bugs. The value of I win again, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, hmm, uh, even the best blade grows dull unless maintained. There you go. All right, I love it. So you go from just one success to what I see four successes four. on the board, which means <laughs> yeah. you get a momentum yeah. back for your trouble. And yeah, yeah mm -hmm. um, what are you attacking with? Is it a dagger or a batleth? Uh, I'll go with. Uh, so which one attacked me? Was it the centipede or the or the, the tiger? centipede is the one that's bearing down on you? Okay, since I so, since I'm not a big fan of bugs, I'll use my disruptor. Okay, well, disruptor would have been a different role. So this is just melee that oh, you would have access okay, to. Okay, so I'll use my dark dark tag then because I wasn't planning on doing combat. Okay, so your uh, dick tag da dagger, I believe, is uh, one plus your security, but it also has vicious. All right, let's take a look. Uh, so that would be a grand total of six. Dude. Let me check the resistance on the creature. All right, you have the option of either spending a momentum to try and reroll to get two more on that blank die, or you uh -huh. could spend two momentum to just do two more damage. I'll just spend two momentum to do two more damage. Okay, so that would bring you down to four, I believe. Yep. And, yep. Uh, yeah, why don't you describe uh, how you disembowel the centipede? Well, I, I, so it tries to bite. I roll under it and stab up, going to the going towards the brain there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where I think the brain is, anyway. <laughs> All right. So you roll under and drive your dagger upwards, and the yep. crunching of the carapace uh, is heard across yep. the entire arena as the centipede uh, creature lets out kind of a skittering screech and then goes limp, uh, and you have to, like, huff ooh. it off of your shoulders because it's a very heavy bug. Uh, nice. So I, I, show a, I show a strength on top of that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, chat has just redeemed a complication because chat does these things. And what nice. that's going to of mean... Course is that the uh, Siberian Tiger is actually going to get uh, to go right away with that complication. Cool. It's uh, not going to have to uh, wait a turn. Nice. So again, okay. we're going to see who's our diplomatic winner. Ah, oh, looks like Maury. Uh, Maury, you are our lucky diplomatic winner. diplomatic winner. Nice. <laughs> so again, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and roll for the mutated Siberian Tiger here. Uh, 24, well, let's expand uh, that out. Uh, well, they have rolled only one money. success, <laughs> so I need to see two successes, Mori, on a daring security if you wish to not be hit and wish to counterattack. Uh, very much so, and I'm going to try to... Uh, I want to see if I could just do a nice little judo takedown on this thing, keep it alive for the moment, and yeah, we'll see what happens after the takedown. So, daring, security, judo time... Ta Okay, so I I would see it again. You would need two successes here, so you only got the one. Let's, I I think it's determination time. Struggle always breeds honor. Okay, 
that and that's just one right you could still re roll as much yeah. as you want but yeah do i still put down that i'm using a focus yes yes okay there you go there's your two successes so from the sounds of it you are unarmed judo throwing this giant tiger thing and if i can i'd like to hold it down um my and i guess next like action no, was like that like grapple yes yes i'm trying i'm out to grapple the thing okay uh so for this go ahead and roll your unarmed strike damage which should be one plus your security here oh i just clicked the thing yeah you're good uh oh. so that should be do, 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 do. so that is uh two oh. knockdown because that is the effect of your unarmed strike so yeah why don't you uh give me a little bit about how you are judo flipping and holding this creature down all right um being a tiger i assume it's gonna pounce and as it does i'm gonna grab it by the scruff of like where the neck meets the shoulder uh bend out a little bit and as it moves kind of just hip toss it so that it's on its back and if i i don't know how one leg locks a giant mutated tiger but we're gonna try to do it carefully very carefully right. yes. very carefully yeah and <laughs> i'm gonna shout captain Hanas. I believe that a little surgical attention would help this creature's head to adorn our bay, uh, to, to adorn the sick bay, if you please. So we're going to do try to like set that up for like a big commanding coordinated strike to Kanas to scalpel this thing's head off. Let's bring home a trophy. A scalpel? Scalpel? <laughs> It's a laser scalpel, but yeah. <laughs> well, well, well I, I mean, ceremonial, very large, two handed curved scalpel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called a bat left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, Let's show him some Klingon surgery. Yeah, Kanas. Uh, All right. I think it's up to you here. Uh, it's right. just a daring security difficulty of one to chop this thing's head off. All right. I'm throwing an assist on that. Oh, right, uh, as a reminder, you do have your special batleth, assuming you brought your special batleth. So uh, you... I would have brought my special batleth to a to a combated oriented group. Yeah. I All right, then, if I remember the rules on that correctly, you actually start at three d twenty rather than two d twenty. That's correct. Yep. And you got fun commanding bloodline shit. So good. Shit. Well, oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. Ignore the yeah. first. Ignore the first. <laughs> oh, That's God. hilarious. I've never rolled that well before in D and D. Yeah, I've ne I've never seen a good roll like that before either. Yeah, that's a that's a one of a kind right there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can ignore the first one and re-roll one d twenty. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so re-roll one of the twenty, and if you get another twenty, it's just the dice will it. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Okay. All right. You oh turn into an eight. All right. You're good. All right. Yeah. I know that out at least. All right. So uh, uh still have the other just... one. Go ahead and uh, describe how you take off well, this thing. Well, I use I use the very large scalpel, known as a batleth, mm -hmm. to just single slunk, right, right. That's quick sever, pain, you know, as pain free of a death as possible. So we're not savages. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our trophy. Not much mm -hmm. to describe. Just single cut. Uh, I might have tripped a little bit coming down. Uh, to, <laughs> you know, but Stumbled. nothing. I stumbled a little bit, yes, but nothing nothing a little dust off wouldn't solve. One person stumble is another's momentum. Yeah, that's what they call it. So combat comes to an end because the Drin aren't going to attack you. They've kind of just been watching this entire time. But as you sort of get the head and you start inspecting your trophy, you realize things are very silent in this Coliseum. And you look up and around at the stands, and what you're seeing is that the Drin here are just gobsmacked they are there you go. from their perspective Impressed. literally you beam down and within 30 seconds destroyed both creatures so there's a bit of like whispering like what the hell Aww. is going on you know what is this you <laughs> like you like whispers across the stands like even the announcer doesn't get on the intercom like there's like a few moments of like the intercom going like uh well folks i don't know what's going on like everybody is just they're in the shocked phase right now so you have a <laughs> moment to say or do something before their brains kick back on Fucking gonna off. step gonna step forward all right sheath my bat left and just bellow out to the entire arena we are klingons 
<laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. what a Klingon well. would do. Uh, I'll, I'll walk to wherever the middle of the arena is, presumably the location of <laughs> the combat. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was also going to see, I have the uh, attache um, mm -hmm. ability. I was wondering, would, would you consider this some form of social conflict? This definitely would be a social conflict. Beautiful. Can I spend uh, two momentum to have studied um, their, can, you know, the kind of photos and stuff we got of these beings in their armor to look for uh, the most optimal place to strike with a batleth to render them not uh, combat viable anymore? Yeah, yeah, that can happen. So you'll go down to two momentum, but Chad will give you another momentum, so you actually stay at three momentum overall. Copy that. All right, so I have the advantage of uh, knowing where to hit them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's one of those things where, again, if aliens were to beam down in the middle of a baseball field or a football field, uh, pandemonium erupts in the stands where some <laughs> people are trying to run away, some people are whipping out their phones and trying to record everything, uh, the cool. security is keeping people from rushing the field, but uh, one of the Drin warriors that was already there in the arena fighting these beasts, uh, one of them approaches and goes... Uh, so you are our visitors from another planet. Uh, uh, you were not expected for hours. <laughs> we were challenged by your champion. We await them. Uh, well, Commander Astiza will be here when her plane lands. Um, my name is Adjudunct. Adjudunct? Adjudent? I can never Adjutant. say that word. Yes, Adjutant. that word. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my name is Lusos, and until Estiza arrives, I can perhaps provide you a challenge, refreshment, whatever is appropriate for visitors from beyond the stars. Are those, those creatures generally threats to your people? Predators of some form? In the past, or yes. They were great hunters of our people. Now we simply breed them for gladiatorial combat. For amusement. What are they called? Well, that one, pointing at the tiger, that is known as a nupa. And then that one, pointing at the centipede, that is a kir. <sighs> and I'll put the spelling of all that in chat. Thank you. There you go. New uh, tiger creature. Wow, dude, somehow I spelled them both correctly. Wow. I did not. Let's go. Um, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> what is your um, role in your society, Lusas? And he actually motions around at the stand, still like clamoring in the stand, shouting, like cheers, you know, the whole nine yards. It's my job to provide entertainment for the people. Is this a generally like a nice place? Would you say that it, it's like, you know, rather rather splendorous and uh, like oh, yeah, like is well it ornate crafted? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, now it's kind of their design moment. language. Yeah, well, now that you have a moment to actually take in your surroundings, uh, yeah, this is actually a sort of a rustic feel, where cool. if you were to take the Colosseum of Rome at its peak and transplant it into the future. So not like the rundown thing it is in current day, but it is, you've got immaculate marble sculptures. You've got like nice. little Gothic trappings of like gargoyles on the corners and, you know, f like Roman columns. It's very well kept, very well maintained. Nice. Well, we have much question. in common. What's the, What's the name of the planet? Yeah, true. What do you call <laughs> the planet? Yeah, that's a good we question. We know what you guys call oh, yeah, I, thought was, I thought it was... The, the Drin planet. Well, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, well, they, be, they're the Drin. We want to know. I, I'm asking about planet. the name of the planet. Yeah, we're not from planet Klingon. <laughs> and this, this is an excellent point. So Lusas kind of looks a little bit aback, or at least as much as you can tell, because he's still wearing his helmet. Uh, but some of the tendrils, the, the eye stalks, uh, kind of swivel up to, like, look at each of you from different angles. And he says... Uh, uh, we call our planet Din. D-I-N, so without the R. Okay. Well, at least it's not dim. 
within the home. Adjutant Lipsis, I ask again. you, how uh, how long has your com has your culture been using gladiatorial combat to settle honor or and provide entertainment? Is this recent? Is this ancient? I'm not sure I'm the one that should be answering these questions, but and he kind of puffs out his chest. I will answer them all the same. Uh, the gladiatorial combat stretches back to the very founding of our species on this planet. Fascinating. How, um, how long ago was that? Kind of thanks for a moment. That would have been roughly 3,000 years ago when we first crawled out from our primordial caves. 3,000 you say. Correct. I, out of character, did, the universal translator is like doing number. Yeah, they're numbers, they're converting right? the it, numbers to. Yeah, they're converting okay. the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, they went from crawling slime to a T minus twenty minutes. Get this rocket on the pad in three thousand years. Pretty good. Damn. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Tell you what, if we come back next week, will you do? You think you'll have those particle weapons done? No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> If, as, if our translation matrix is working properly, this is quite the rapid evolution to a level of technology in 3,000 years. Has your society and your culture been through some sort of interfered crucible? Have you been, have you been advanced or uplifted? This is quite astonishing. And again, Lusas makes the comment of, again, I don't think I should be saying this. I, I think this is uh, Estiza's job, but since she's not here, I will take that honor. Um, our species has forged itself in the fires of combat, not just here in the arenas, but among ourselves. We were a very, shall we say, conflicted species uh, as we developed. And yes, there were large wars across all of Din, but as of late, as of about 52 years ago, we have realized that fighting amongst ourselves will only lead to pure destruction, not only of our planet, but of ourselves, so that we have now engaged in less barbaric forms of combat outside the arena, and more, I suppose you would call them war games. So you've reached the Age of Wisdom. Yes, I suppose you could put it that way. Is um, the grander scale of your planet agree with this motion of wisdom? At this, uh, Lusas actually kind of reaches up to the bottom of his helmet and clicks a button, and his voice is amplified so that everybody in the stands can hear. Because uh, at this point, it's just been a private conversation between the two sure. of you. But now it's now across the entire Coliseum. Uh, Coliseum. Okay. And Lusa says, Good people, I know that we were expecting Estiza to handle this, but until she gets here, I will take the honor of welcoming these Klingons to our world. They are curious. Are we wise people? Are we perhaps worthy of being visited by members from another galaxy. And the sands go quiet. And then this little kid, like literally just a kid in like the lowest row, so almost like like ringside, this little kid just shouts, I think I could take him in a fight. And everybody <laughs> erupts into laughter and cheers nice. and claps. Aww. And uh, Lusas actually points at the kid and goes, well, there is your answer, Klingons. Even the smallest among us, we are wise enough to pick our battles correctly. And spirited. Indeed spirited. We shall see the outcome of this combat. I look forward to the very real honor of, of having our great champion clash blades with one another. Out of character, I feel like we're cutting a promo for WrestleMania here. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, here <laughs> to, I'm here for it, though. The great ritual <laughs> pepper view shall determine. No, Make sure we got some chairs stacked ready to slam. <laughs> I'm going uh, JR. I'm gonna look around. Is there anyone, is there anyone like eyeing us real, real heavily that looks like, you know, 
I might have a little bit of fire in the gut. Uh, I mean, we're waiting those... cha- we've been challenged by the champion. Let's let the champion do it, unless they're all stupid. I mean, I can challenge. I, I can fight a couple more where we went. Uh, uh, it's one of those things where, <laughs> again, the the eye stocks of all the Dren are like again shifting around, trying to get as many images and mm-hmm. feel for you as as Klingons. Um, but none of them, aside from the kid who's just a kid, um, yeah. none of them are like, oh, I'm gonna go, let me rip off my shirt and jump into the arena, kind of a thing. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. Well, so yeah, man, maybe they are a little wise. Yeah, exactly. Perhaps then, the PE you wish to you show that you are wisdom, uh, that you are wise and honorable. We do await your champion and the official challenge of whether or not the the Jin, the world of Jin, shall join with the galaxy, or if they shall stay their separate ways. Do you have the tradition of an undercard match? A warm-up <laughs> battle, if you will. <laughs> and Lusas kind of quirks his head to the side and says, no, I'm not familiar with this concept. Uh, by the way, I must say it is surprising that you speak our language, though I suppose if you are from another galaxy, that might actually be expected. Klingon science is unparalleled in all galaxies. And with mm-hmm. great fortune and skill, we have been able to ensure that the transition, that the translation of honor is indeed not just galactic, but universal. With the great pains we take to understand this knowledge, so do we take to impart and improve our own honor as we show honor to the galaxy conk and visit. Then perhaps allow me allow this humble and honorable Cleon Colonel to educate the tradition of the undercard. Before a great match, before champions clash, we must set the stage for the champion. We must show what a battle looks like. And we have perhaps not the finest of the fine, but whoever is willing to show that they may draw first blood, that they may show a little taste of what has come. We have a battle before the battle. And I propose, Adjutant Sauce, that while our champion Akrok awaits Captain, forgetting her name, Captain Estiza and her and her arrival, perhaps you and I shall warm up proud. Let us have a match to first blood, and see who will begin this display of honor. What say you to this challenge, Adjutant? At this, his eye stalks kind of go rigid as they are locked onto you. And then the back, so two of them are locked onto you, and then the third one kind of looks around at the stands. And again, to the entire uh, entire Coliseum, he says, Well, what do you think, everyone? Should I engage this Klingon and show him how we do things here on Din? And of course, the crowd erupts into cheers and, you know, things of that nature. And yeah, the other uh, Drin uh, are going to help drag off uh, the carcasses of the Nupa and the Kir. They will, of course, let you keep the head for yourselves. Um, But they do kind of shepherd you nicely off to the side so that Lusas and uh, uh, Mori can have a little bit of honorable combat. Yes. Cool. Now, one thing I'm going to ask is that, uh, Mori, are you using a dagger now? Are you still doing unarmed? Have you moved to a batleth? What are you coming at this fight with? Hey, I challenged him. Let him pick the weapons. Okay. So in that case, uh, Lusas is actually going to grab one of the spears from his fellow warriors and toss it to you and goes, I see you were without a weapon, though I understood that you threw the Nupa very well. It would be best if you had a tool of some kind. Hmm. I mean, I probably would have beamed down with a batleth and just opted to go at that guy, the uh, tiger, unhanded. But uh, if I have the batleth, I'll use that. But if not, I'll take the spear. Let's say you take the spear for sake of argument. Um, it's nice. And then he kind of does one of those like matrix moves where he swirls the spear around in his his hands and does the whole like. Keanu pose where he does like, with the spear behind his like, back and the, the like hand forward. Over in Martel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. motions with two fingers for you to come at him. Oh, I'm, I'm going wow. to spend this whole combat just watching this guy's fighting style and seeing yeah. if they have like a favored kind of way to fight. Anything that I can use against uh, fighting the commander. Okay. That sort of thing. 
Actually, let me make sure oh. I have this in my notes. Also, you have an advantage fighting. Yes, weapon. yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Does the spear count as a bladed weapon for it does. focus? It All right. All right. I'm not going to go in showy. Going to just get this thing at the ready. Uh, I don't know spear combat terminology, but I'm going to start circling. I'm not going to do nothing too fancy. Just grasp it. Keep, you know, start pro circling, circling, mm -hmm. and look for opportunities. Okay. So it's one of those things where Lusos isn't giving you a traditional opening. And since he has the benefit of multiple eyes, even as you get, like, he, he's still, uh, let, me, let me start that over. So he initially starts facing you, <laughs> but as you maybe circle around him, he stays in the same position, but his eye oh. stalks follow you. So even as you get behind him, maybe, he still has eyes on you. Cool. Okay. What's the... What's the ground of this uh, arena like? Sand, concrete, grass? Uh, it is a red sand. Okay. All right. Refresh my memory. Add a character. Do do Klingons do the whole like kick sand and faces thing, or is that just? I yeah, I, I think that would be dishonorable. Maybe. Just okay. All right. Just keep in mind. I'm just making sure I remember what's fighting dirty. All mm -hmm. right. Then we're gonna just go into combat. Do a couple of, like you know probes, and I'll just kind of see what he attacks and defends you know i also need to take measure of the weapon let's see how it feels see how it translates and let's start going at him you know let's uh or if at all possible maybe i can psych him out a little bit you know see what he reacts to aim for what i think might be genital no not quite <laughs> well, listen wow. i mean what if was Sarah talking dirty uh, you know, if Star Trek Six is any indication, apparently some of them <laughs> keep it in their knees, because why would you keep it anywhere else but your knees? No, of course. Um, there we go. All right, well, this sounds like this is going to be an opposed daring in a security, as per usual. Uh, what I would tell you is that while it is a difficulty of one, as a reminder, the number of successes you get is the number I have to beat. And what I would tell you is that Lusos and Astiza have their own personal threat pools. Probably don't want to blow all the momentum too early. That's fine. We're just going to start out with the regular roll. Um, yeah, I got a blade of weapons focus. Let's just see how this goes. Okay. Daring security, you said, right? Yep. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Two successes. I'm going to get... He's going to spend three from his personal threat pool to roll four dice. And let's expand out that 36. He got four successes there, which means uh, wow. he actually is going to get two of his threat back. So what that's oh. going to look like is you maybe jab forward and attempt to find, you know, like openings, as you said, or openings or uh, moments of opportunity. But what ends up happening is as your spear comes forward, his spear circles around and almost like, uh, almost like you know, stereotypical badass kung fu master. He actually reaches out with his hand, grabs your spear, wrenches it out of your hand, and then tosses it away. Dang. Oh, that's fine. All right. And then he points the spear, uh, does one of the things. So it's one fluid motion. He grabs the spear, throws it away, and then the spear tip comes right up underneath your chin. And he actually kind of looks, you know, a little bit quizzical. You know, he kind of tilts his head to the side and goes, this is the best you have to offer? So how does the how does the reaction like stuff happens? Like does he now attack or something, or is this basically end of combat? This is end of combat unless you want to unarmed strike him, unless you want to attack him with your bare hands. I, um, I very much do. Well, he's actually, he's wanted to do that for the past two hours. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. No, no All right. I, I've still got some judo skills. I've still got the ability to disarm him and level the playing field right back if he wants to play it like this. All right, so what I am going to tell you, though, is that this will be a more difficult task for you. So before, this was a difficulty of one, where you had to get at least one success for this to come off, and it was still opposed. What this is now going to be, it is now going to be a difficulty of three before we count number of successes. Now, I would like to see if I can make intelligence officer come to bear... Once permission, right. I can create an advantage without requiring a task or blah, blah, blah. Uh, detail or insight. I'd like to get a briefing on 
uh, I don't know if it's like multi-ocular creatures or spear, uh, spear-focused cultures or something, but mm-hmm. I'd like to get an advantage out of that. Okay, that'll lower your difficulty to a two. All right. Cool. Uh, throw a momentum in to start. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna judo that. We're gonna I'm gonna try to do something similar to him. Either break the spear or disarm him, or do other fun things. Let's see how well we do. All right. So is that is that still uh, daring security? Still daring security. Okay, that's focus. So for the advantage, that doesn't change the number of the pool, but uh, spending the momentum does, right? Yeah. Okay, that's three. Okay, so you have achieved the bare minimum number of successes. So you've succeeded, but you have basically zero successes when you are compared. So what this means is if I roll three or more successes, you are once again bested in this combat. I think Uh, I've got to give you a... Can I give you a threat and uh, re-roll one of them? uh, What do you have? Do you have... What are you trying to trigger there? Well, I thought it was uh, if I spend a threat that... uh... There was a rule involved. Uh, if you had bold and security, that would be where you would, uh, when you buy dice with threat, you would be able to re-roll. Let's um, see. Let me check okay. your talents. There might be something here that we're missing. Dauntless probably doesn't do anything. Yeah, Dauntless oh. doesn't do anything. Veteran, you haven't used your determination yet. Uh, Bracklul is only against non-lethal. Advisor, you're cool. the one doing the roll. Intelligence officer, you just already used it. And commanding bloodline. Yeah, there's nothing in your talents that would uh, let you re-roll here, unfortunately. Oh, well, he, he did use his determination earlier, so wouldn't, that, wouldn't he have tried to roll for veteran to get that back? Oh, yeah. You know what? Good point. Go ahead and so roll your challenge there's die. The, yeah, it's potential you might get it back. But Okay. And I'm just clicking on the thing next to veteran to the route, right? Or is that different? Uh, you would click the perform challenge button and put in one. So. Okay, so you do not get your determination back, unfortunately. Um, so your options here is either you let the roll stand at two successes, or um, you can challenge a value here. And I think this is probably the first instance of this in the campaign. <laughs> so what I mean by challenging a value is you would cross out a value by checking the little thing next to the value, and you would get a point of determination back, but you would have to replace that value at the end of the session. All right. I think that this is definitely a time to put forth the honorable path is not always obvious. Sometimes it is obvious, and that is you should have been better at spears. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Paid more attention to that in that fighting class. Not, sure, not yeah. been so cocky and been like, "Why, well, yes, I would like to use the weapon I've used, I've trained for my whole life." Well, mm-hmm. also, I, yeah, dip, dip, I over, it, this was Klingon diplomacy overthinking, and should he should have just been more Klingon. All right, so I guess I just toggle that. Mm-hmm. All right. and, and that then was... you have your determination back. You can re-roll as many of your dice as you wish. I want to get... Yeah, well, I got just the one, so we're going to just perform the one that focus on. Please give me six. Okay, cool. that is significant. That is four successes total, which means I'm going to need five. Yes, I'm going to need five to beat you here. Mm-hmm. Is it possible? I mean, he's got good stats. It is possible. It is possible. I have to blow the remaining threat, but yeah, he's going to roll four dice. Okay, 28. Let's expand that out. I see a two, which is That's two. Good. I see a five, which is another two. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. He rolled Oof. six successes. Here. Are you kidding me? Yo, not this guy's not good. Not wow. This guy All is right. good. So... Narratively, what that's going to look like is you try to duck under the spear or block it aside and try to rush him. But what happens is as you are rushing forward, he very quickly turns the spear around so that he hits you with the butt of it and completely hits you in the chest, knocking your wind out, knocking you to the ground. And at this, like, there's a bit of jeering in the crowd. Like, is this the best the Klingons have to offer? And a little bit of, like, boo, boo kind of a thing. Um, As Lusas himself says, stay down this time. Clearly you are not ready to fight me. There is indeed no no shame in falling for a superior opponent. It is my dishonor for having challenged above my skill. 
I yield. Let us see how the final round goes between our champions. And once you've yielded, he actually withdraws the spear and offers out one of his hands to help you up. And I'm going to take it. You know, that's that's how, how that's how combat do. That's mm-hmm. how clean up shit happen. Now, one thing that I've been keeping track of is the amount of time. So initially, Estiza was going to land and, you know, just take a cab over here. But what you're going to hear <laughs> is a supersonic like boom. And you look up and you see Estiza's vessel fly over the Coliseum. And then like the hatch blows off. And she hops out of her vessel and in a nice. very, very classic three point superhero landing nice. does the boom to the Coliseum floor, the sand rippling out from the force of the impact. And in her uh, in her hands is a wicked looking curved dagger. And she produces another one in her other hand as she pulls her hand up from the floor and she says, which among you am I to fight? And that's where we're going to make this a two-parter because we've come no! up on time. Oh! All right. Uh, good, I, good, I, spot to, good spot to break yeah, it. Though. That was a great yeah, spot, totally, ending totally. spot. Maury's got the a little bit of shame to, to uh, undo. There, yeah, there's so, be somebody's some... got to go lick his uh, wounds a little bit. The, mm-hmm. the, it, there, will be, there will be songs of his shame and jeering for some time, but it has been done in the name of the Empire. There is no dishonor in ha- in having tried and failed. There's only dishonor in never trying it. Hey, yo, that guy, that guy was pretty good, dude. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, he wrecked no it. Slouch, no slouch, man. No slouch. No. And a crack's got to fight the best. I got to fight the, the better one. Next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yep. yeah. So hopefully a crack will not be as cocky. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I guess we should have just gone in and started conquering. I didn't oh, say well. that. Just don't be like, oh, I don't need to use the weapon I've trained in. <laughs> well, it was more like that. Was what were we gonna do? Turn down the challenge? I didn't say turn down the challenge. Like you, you know. <laughs> Hey, I mean, you you were the one that was like, all right, let's fight. And also, Wait. I'll use your weapons. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Well, I thought I thought that the whole thing was, oh, he's thrown you the thing. I was like, oh, shit, did I actually declare I brought my battle for me? So that's okay. It came out in hey, a cool way. It worked. Way. Fun. Yeah. It was yeah. very fun narratively. Yeah. yeah, it did make for a fun yeah. narrative, too. Yeah, we don't have to... Bruce we, Ego. We, no, we're now, trying I am going to gonna say that what's going to happen is we're going to get to the next session. We're going to get into the fight, and then I'm going to roll like four twenties in a row. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to say I think this is probably a good thing. You, maybe maybe you just used up all of ELH's uh, positive rolls. So yeah. yeah, yeah. We we pushed their planet's singular greatest into using every single thing he had against someone he'd never seen before. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. That, and that's it's, okay. Look, it's, it's great if we win in the end, that's playing on. Right. Yeah, it's true. And, and the best part is Astiza has double the threat pool. Uh, that nice. uh, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, well, uh, Twitch, stick That's around because we're gonna raid somebody. But YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Bye. Bye.